We'll highlight the scale of the problem within the industry, as far too many companies still underestimate the impact it's having on their profits. We will talk about some really useful trends and behaviours, uh, which are key, and we will also speculate on why the industry struggles so much with bonus abuse, and we'll save the best till last and discuss some solutions on how to identify large amounts of bonus abuse. I soon realised the scalability of, of bonus abuse and went on to focus on high-risk advantage play for both sport and casino. Process relied on having multiple identities to soften the blow of variance. I had a full-time operation with an office, several staff and a, and a big stack of laptops. I got into bonus abuse about five years ago. Uh, I was quite quick to realise the potential. So I ditched my well-paid job and started bonus abusing full-time. So after we teamed up, we began sharing our individual knowledge of strategies and exploits. Uh, we started developing a complete database of casinos, listing the estimated value of their welcome offers based on the different ways of exploiting them. So in the background, you can see a case study of 3,057 casino offers that I exploited across 205 different operators. I had made just over £89,000 from working less than 25 hours per week for one year um, over 2018 and 19. These offers were all completed as intended without breaching any of the terms or exploiting any loopholes. This is what we call advantage play. So bonus abuse has been around for a very long time. It was around 13 years ago that online guides began to surface and they quickly became mainstream. They usually pick up a bonus abuse forum and they start on sports offers. Uh, the math is straightforward, it's not particularly time consuming. You can do it around your day job uh, and take it one step at a time. Uh, and once people have done the welcome offers, they start learning about retention offers. Uh, once they've got the hang of retention offers, they start to look at casino um, and figuring out the different ways in which they can be abused. Uh, and when you've got enough accounts to bet with, you have probably made at this point five figures um, and you're a driving instructor and he would sign up his clients as betting identities uh, and you're a guy that uh, he got his gym instructor to sign up identities for him. Um, I've heard of people standing outside job centres recruiting people they don't even know just because they know that poor people are, are likely candidates, you know, if you give them a, a cut of the profits, it's money for nothing. So is multi-accounting legal? Uh, well, we're not lawyers and we're not here to try and advise uh, what's legal or not, but we will speculate on how it's perceived by the bonus abuse communities. Uh, it's a question that most bonus abusers will investigate before recruiting multiple identities to bet with. In short, it's never been tested in court. So if we take an average of, say, £1,000 annual average profit per identity, uh, based on the amount of betting identities there are, that would bring the total cost into a billion pounds. Uh, per year for the UK industry alone. So with these smaller setups, uh, a single person will manage the betting on all of the accounts, uh, utilising auto spin or auto clickers to run multiple casino offers simultaneously. Uh, they'll be literally jumping from one laptop to the next, rapidly betting on sports offers uh, between all of them before the odds change. Others take a, a more industrial approach. So um, some form syndicates where a small group of people will pull together to have hundreds or thousands of accounts between them. Some employ staff and have an office where they systematically manage their variable IPs. They, they work to daily EV targets and it's like a factory. Uh, their ability to scale up is theoretically endless. I have a case study of over 2,700 accounts that I created and exploited across 207 operators in 2018 and 19. So multiple accounts with each site. Every single one of my accounts would have been identified with every data point we just talked about. I use the same device, I use mobile IP with laptops, I use prepaid cards, Gmail accounts, and numbers were provided by the network free. I use brand new bank cards and email addresses, the phone and emails had no searchable history, and they all had the same password. Only one operator ever prevented me from making new accounts or depositing. Each piece of data individually is not that powerful, but once you start combining them, they become very powerful.